The history of warfare at sea is replete with examples of ships built for specific, sometimes quite unexpected purposes. Often, however, these ships turned out to be completely inadequate, and as a result, they were hardly used, and the designed ships of the same type became unnecessary. A similar story happened with the Japanese light cruiser Oyodo. The Japanese concept of submarine-based naval warfare was slowly but surely taking on an unusual feature. In the opinion of the fleet commanders, a full-fledged cruiser was to serve as the flagship of submarine formations. Since 1922, this role was assigned to already obsolete units, in particular ships of the Chikuma type, as well as the more familiar floating vessels. However, the Naval General Staff debated throughout the 1920s about how many flagships there should be in a submarine division, and what, exactly, should the flagship be? In the end, the answer was given by technological progress. The significant increase in both range and speed of submarines throughout the 1930s made all available flagships obsolete, and the Japanese command made a choice in favor of light cruisers. By the end of 1938, the Japanese Maritime Ministry adopted a draft plan for the fourth program of fleet replenishment, which included the creation of a series of two 8,200-ton cruisers, W-136 and W-137, with a maximum speed of 35 knots. On March 6, 1939, the plan was approved by the Diet, and on October 6, Captain 3rd Rank Daisuke Ozono and Rear Admiral Keiji Fukuda handed in the finished drawings of the C-42 project. To speed up the preparation of the project, they used the work on the C-41 project, the future Agano type, which was being developed at the Maritime Ministry in parallel with the C-42. As a result, the ships were to have the following characteristics, length 192 meters, width 16.6 meters, draft 6.1 meters, the standard displacement was 8534 tons, the displacement shown on sea trials was 10417 tons, and the full displacement was 11,133 tons. One of the features was the installation of a bow bulb, which was quite a rare practice for the Imperial Navy. The armor was weak, the main belt was covered by a 60 millimeter layer of steel, the deck armor was 30 millimeters, and the turrets were in the range of 20 to 40 millimeters. Since cruisers were not intended to fight their own kind, this protection was considered sufficient. All armor was calculated so as to withstand hits from 155 mm semi-armor piercing shells and 250 Kira bombs. The power plant consisted of four Kampan steam turbines with a gearbox, each of which drove one three-bladed propeller. Steam was supplied by six water tube boilers of the same Kampan company. The projected power was to be 11,000 HP, which would give a speed of 35 knots. But on sea trials, it was possible to exceed both figures. They amounted, respectively, to 11,04,30 HP and 35,199 knots. Forcing the machines gave on tests 11,59,50 HP and 35,31 knots. The cruiser's main armament was to consist of six 155-meter third-year type guns and two turrets, removed during modernization from the Mogami ships. The guns were originally intended to be versatile, but low rate of fire of five rounds per minute and limited pointing angles, 55 degrees, put an end to these plans. Therefore, the armament was supplemented with eight universal 100 mm 65 Type 98 guns and 1825 mm 60 Type 96 anti-aircraft guns. The number of the latter was brought to 52 by 1945. Since this type of light cruiser should also perform reconnaissance functions, the entire space behind the superstructure was allocated for aviation armament. It was because of this that it was decided not to install torpedo tubes on the ships. The hangar could accommodate four seaplanes. Two more were on a powerful 44-meter catapult. Air armament was supposed to be represented by the latest Kawanishi E-15K Shiyun, but they were unsuccessful. As a result, the Aichi E-13A were actually in service. Very powerful communications equipment was also installed. 
The first ship of the series, number 136, was ordered to the Corps Fleet Arsenal on December 6, 1939. It was scheduled to be laid down in June 1940. But due to the busy shipyard, the ship was laid down only on February 14, 1941. And on March 10, 1942, it was named Oyoto after one of the Japanese rivers. The cruiser did not enter service until February 1943. The second ship in the series, Na-137, was to be laid down on the same slipway as the 136 after the latter was launched. But the approaching military conflict led to a revision of plans in favor of more efficient and better ships. On April 24, 1942, the future cruiser Ibuki was laid down on the vacated slipway. On August 3rd, the command finally canceled the construction of ship Na-137, which was to be named Niodo. With the outbreak of World War II, the Japanese command realized that the intended role of flagship for Oyodo was not feasible. Therefore, the ship was used either as an ordinary light cruiser or as an armed transport. Oyodo made her first major voyage as part of a convoy in July 1943 to the Caroline Islands in New Guinea. On September 23rd, already in a combat force, the cruiser sailed to Aniwetok Atoll to prevent a possible American attack. On October 17th, the ship arrived at Wake Island with the same objectives. On both occasions, an American attack did not occur. On December 6th, Vice Admiral Jisaburo Ozawa, commander of the Third Fleet, hoisted his pennant on Oyodo and sailed for New Guinea. There the cruiser participated in an operation to reinforce garrisons. On the return trip, on January 1, 1944, Oyodo was damaged in a U.S. air attack, but by February was delivering supplies to Saipan Atoll. From March 6 to 30, 1944, the cruiser underwent repairs in Yokosuka, during which she was arranged rooms for the fleet headquarters and various equipment. The choice of this particular ship was determined by its low efficiency at sea, as well as the presence of a spacious aircraft hangar with large free areas and powerful equipment for communication. After leaving the dock, Oyodo became the flagship of the Combined Fleet of Japan. Fleet Commander Admiral Soemu Toyota remained on this ship until September 29th, when he had to move to an underground complex in Yokohama. Thank you for watching this video to the end. Please write in the comments which scene you remember the most. Have a good day.